Everybody, it's time to go, tum, come together, and we're going to warm up right here with number four. This is right from your homework that's due Thursday, May 15. All right. It reads: the volume of a gas is 30 liters at 313 Kelvin, 153 kilopascals of pressure. What would the volume be at standard temperature and pressure? So, Cole, what is the question asking for, please? What would the volume be? All right, so V1 or V2? Uh, V2. V2, okay. So when you rearrange our combined gas law, that's going to be P1 times V1 times T2 divided by pressure 2 and temperature 1, all right? So, Avery, what's pressure one, please? Um, 153 kilopascals. 153 kilopascals. Exactly right. George, what is volume one? How many liters? 30. Good. 30.0 liters. Okay. And now here's the thing. The only trick I threw here is what's temperature to become? And it's standard temperature and pressure is the trick. Okay? So you gotta look in your notes. Alright. Ryan, what's standard temperature? Standard. Everybody's watching too, so make sure you get it right. Standard. Temperature. <laughs> Good job, Ryan. Pretty. 273 what? What unit, sir? Kelvin. Nice. T2 is 0 degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. All right. Pressure 2. What is it, Cole? What is pressure, standard pressure? I said 101.3 Nice. Keep it the same units. Don't do 1 ATM. Do 101.3 kPa so that unit cancels out. And then 313 Kelvin will be temperature 1. So my kPa is canceled. My Kelvin's canceled. What did Cole Phillips get? I got 39.5. Yay. There you go. There's there's number four from that homework there. Anybody got any questions? Okay. All right, so I want to get into the new notes here. That's why we're videotaping this lesson, so everybody that has missed today, so they get to hopefully, hear us too. yep, they're going to get to hear us, and if you want to relive this because you're missing uh, Mr. Benson, you can watch this later. All right. I just, yeah, if you want to run this. So here's our first ICAN, and I want to spend two minutes on it. Okay. The ICAN statement, I can explain when it is appropriate to use the relationship one mole of gas equals 22.4 liters. And it's kind of review, that's why I don't want to spend more than two minutes on it. I already talked about this when we did our mole conversion. When is the only time we can use one mole equals 22.4 liters? Lee Ramsey? Okay, so you have to be at standard temperature and pressure STP, which is a temperature of Zero degrees Celsius slash what, Maddie? Yeah, what's the Kelvin? Oh, 273. Good job, 273 Kelvin. And a pressure of one atmosphere slash what? Go ahead, Keishan. 
1.3 kb. So if both those conditions don't exist, you cannot use the one mole equals 22.4 liter. That's why in those questions I'm always supposed to say at SOP. Now, you don't have to memorize STP. It is on the reference table right in the front there. And in fact, I would have that reference table out so because we're going to need it. OK, so now I want to teach you a new equation. OK, I can explain when it's appropriate to use the ideal gas equation. And an ideal gas equation, it gives us the relationship of everything for one gas sample, meaning, let me get my balloon out. It's a different balloon than yesterday because I had to throw that away. So yesterday with the combined gas law, we had our balloon. All right. And what we did is I said, what I asked what would happen. All right, you have a pressure right now and you have a volume. How about I reduce this volume in half what happens to pressure? You guys, are, oh my gosh, the pressure increases. Okay, so we change something. All right, what happens when we change things? Okay, what happens if I change the temperature and I leave it outside in the cold or I throw it in the fire? Okay, what we do today is we just look at our sample of gas. It has the temperature in there. It has a pressure, those particles hitting the wall, and it takes up this much volume. Also, we add one thing today, okay, moles. It's the particles inside here, how many gas particles there are. That's a very important characteristic of a gas. And basically, they're all related. Okay. In an ideal gas, they have this perfect mathematical relationship. Okay and they have a, what's called a common factor, and we give that a gas constant, which I'm gonna hopefully explain and make clear later. Okay. The gas constants are just the common factor that the pressure, volume, moles of gas, and temperature are all related, okay? Key thing today, we don't change anything, okay? We don't change the conditions. So, Let's talk, start by talking about what is an ideal gas. Okay. Yesterday I gave you a list of characteristics. The first characteristic, well, I'm sorry, one of the characteristics was gas molecules move in straight lines. Who else can give me another characteristic of yesterday? Go ahead, Peyton. They never stop until Okay, and when they collide, what kind of collisions did they have? There was a term for it. Elastic. All right, I'll let you answer this one. Elastic collision. And what it means is, even when they collide, Peyton, they're not going to lose energy, so theoretically they never slow down. Elastic collisions means they never slow down. They're going to collide and keep the same kinetic energy and they move. And go ahead with the next thing, Avery. Um, the temperature of gases is directly related to the average kinetic energy. To me, this is the important one. Temperature is directly related to average kinetic energy. And there might be two more, but someone, I could get one more. One more of the characteristics of an ideal gas. Go ahead, Lee. Good. They have no volume. Okay. This was an ideal gas following the kinetic molecular theory to perfection. This is the characteristics they would have. Unfortunately, it's never ideal, but we can get conditions very close to ideal. We said yesterday there are two conditions to be an ideal gas. What kind of temperature do, do I have, Maddie? A higher temperature. Exactly right. The, the faster you get these particles moving, the more ideal your gas is. 
And then how about pressure, high or low pressure? Low pressure, good. Thank you so much. Okay. When you have those two conditions, that's when gases are most ideal. Okay. So the gas law includes the variables pressure, volume, temperature. You're used to all those factors. We add one more factor today, number of moles. Okay. The key thing is the conditions do not change. The ideal gas law describes one gas sample that does not change there is no P1 and P2 or V1 and V2 oops let me move that up does not change and we'll see in the question here what I mean by that Here's the formula. PV equals NRT. And last year they came up with a way to help themselves remember this. I like it. If it helps you, by all means use it. They called it the pervert formula. <laughs> the pervert formula, PV equals NRT. Because Perver perverts never change, Mr. Benson. If it helps you remember, there you go. Are you a I am not. I am not. Okay. All right. So, PV equals NRT. All right. And we know what's P mean, um, Christy. What's P mean? Pressure. What's V mean? Volume. What's N mean? You don't know yet. How about T though? Temperature. We know PV and T. N is something new. Nope, it's the number of moles. Okay. And R is our magic common factor, the ideal gas constants. It's the number that keeps all these things related to each other. I could direct your attention to the chemistry reference table front page um, big box towards the top right there see how it says gas constant capital R in parentheses that's where you're going to go to find it don't waste your time memorizing the numbers don't waste your time memorizing the units because there's a heck of a lot of units there just come find it and write it down okay the key thing is there's three different ones here which one of the three do you use in your problem? Here's the key thing. Ideal gas constant. Key factor. Is looking at the unit given for pressure. So if you guys will look at that, let's explain what we mean here. Okay. So take a look at the units here. Notice the liters are the same in all three of those numbers there. Liters is a unit in all three. Notice moles is a unit in all three, and so is Kelvin. The only thing that's different with the numbers is your unit for pressure. So if I said to Caroline, Caroline, if the pressure that I give you is in atmospheres, what number do you use? The 0.0821, the 62.4, or the 8.314? Perfect. This one here that has atmospheres in it, that's what you use. Just write that number and all those units down. If I said to Anna, how about the one that you use the most? I think KPA. Which one of these numbers are going to use if KPA is what I give you? 
8.314. And honestly, 62.4 is the one I always forget because I never use it. I'm never going to do millimeters on mercury. We'll do these two. Okay. It's all what unit of pressure I give you. So there's that. Don't memorize it. Let's write down the two ones that we care about. If it's ATMs, we're going to use 0 0.0821. ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. And the reason we write all those units out, you're going to see it cancels everything. All those units cancel everything for us. And then the one that's probably even more common that you'll use, 8.314 kPa's times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So one of these two, whatever pressure. All right, so I'm ready to do an uh, example. Does anyone have a question that they want to ask at all? Okay. All right. So the example is a 4.5 grams of methane gas um, in a two-liter container at 35 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure expressed in atmospheres ATM? So you read the question. Here's the first thing when you got a gas law problem. Did one of your units change? Did one of your units change here? No. No. Herbert equation. Herbert's never changed. PV equals MRT. Okay. And what are we what um factor are we trying to solve for? Pressure. Uh, Pressure, exactly right, in ATM. So to rearrange it, we're going to cross that volume down. P equals MRT divided by volume. Okay. Um, the only thing tricky about this one, I did not give you moles. So you're going to have to convert the 4.5 grams of methane to moles of methane. Right, so let's just do that real quick. 4.50 grams CH4 one mole of CH4 is 16 grams of CH4 it was point two something point two eight one is that what you got Anna point two eight one yeah. I remembered right 0.281 moles of CH4. Okay, so that's what you're going to plug in for N. So let's go ahead and write that down. 0.281 moles. Let's skip R for just a second. Let's do R last. How about T? What am I going to plug in for T there? Who wants to tell me? 308. How'd you get 308, Allie? Yep. This right here, 35 degrees Celsius plus 273 is 308. Okay. Divide that by our volume, um, which is what, Josh? Um, two. Good job. 2.0. Good liters. And so finally, Tessie, what am I going to use for R here? For R, you're going to use 0 0.0821 ATM times uh, mole times Kelvin. 0.0821 ATMs times liters divided by mole times Kelvin. And the reason we do it is the question asks you to find pressure in atmosphere. So you have to have atmospheres in the R. And so here's why all these units are here. Okay? Moles on the top cancel out moles in the bottom of that unit. Kelvin on the top cancel out Kelvin on the bottom of that unit. And finally, liters on the top cancel out liters on the bottom. And if I could get an answer for that, because I don't remember off the top of my head. 
3.55 atmosphere. Okay. All right. So what I want you guys to do now, while I pause the video, is please turn over and do the top question there. What volume will 12, 12 grams of O2 gas occupy at 25 degrees Celsius and 52.7 kPa pressure? Did any units change? No. No. Use the pervert formula. Okay, so you guys working at home should have got 17.6 liters. If not, you suck. All right. <laughs> so, all right. So, here, I'm going to teach you the easiest thing I teach you all year now. It takes two minutes. Dalton's law of partial pressure. I can explain when it is appropriate to use that law and to solve for either partial pressure, well, I have a typo here, or total pressure. Total pressure. Okay. All right. So before I before I go through this law, you need to know what partial pressure is. So partial pressure, it is the pressure of one gas in a mixture. It is one of many. It is a pressure of just one gas, but the key thing is we're going to mix multiple gases together. And I want to show you a picture out of the book. To me, this explains everything you need to know about Dalton's law of partial pressure here. Okay. So what you have here is you have three gas samples, A, B, and C and you have a total when you mix them all together, okay? I know you cannot see the colors here, but container area, these are green circles, and the key thing is 100 kPa. That's the partial pressure of A. Partial pressure of B is 250 kPa. You cannot see the colors, those are red, okay? And these ones are blue slash purple. Um, mixture C, part of, I'm sorry, partial pressure C is 200 kPa, and lo and behold, what happens if you would mix them all together, and what is your total pressure? Who can explain where that number 550 came from? You added all the other... Cole Phillips, loud and proud. Do you want to stand up here and be in the video, Cole? Uh, you know what? I have to know. Okay, <laughs> you explain to the audience at home how you got 550 kPa. Well, audience at home. <laughs> Oh, you can add. You move over, Willie. You're not in the video. Oh, excuse me. Oh, wow. That's good. Right there. <laughs> you went too far. Can I use like the ruler stick? Or? I don't. Here's your stick. All right. You want to add that one, and that one, and that one, and you get that one. <laughs> it's that easy. Thank you, Cole Phillips. Nice job. All right. All right, guys. Here's the most difficult thing I may ask you to do. Okay. It says you could solve for one of these partial pressures, meaning if I gave you the total is 550, and I said, you know what, A has 100, B has 250, blank, tell me the partial pressure of C. That's as difficult as I am going to make these problems. Okay. So that's what you would have to do. It is just like me asking you to fill in this blank. Something you can do right in your head. What's that blank there? Five. five. But to do that, you added these two numbers together to get five, and then you subtracted from this side, minus five, minus five. And so yes, what you do in your head, that's what you're going to sometimes have to do. So let us finish up the notes of the easiest thing I teach you all year, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, okay? 
defined the total pressure of a mixture of gases Just add all partial pressures. That simple. P total equals partial pressure one plus partial pressure two plus partial pressure three dot dot dot. If you have 10 partial pressures, add up all 10. If you have two, just add up the two. And that's the easiest thing, all your Dalton's Law partial pressures. This example right here requires you to solve for the partial pressure of O2. I'll let you guys do that. You'll come back on your own. Let's just do the last example. It's the easy one. Determine the total pressure. P total. It contains oxygen. So you're going to add the partial pressure of oxygen with helium. And finally, the last thing, add up nitrogen's pressure there. And here are your values. You got 35.8. Plus 29.2 plus 13.0. I'll let you guys do that. I will let you guys at home do that. Come see me if you have questions. Also, if you did not get 17.6 for that one, you don't suck. Just look at my work here and come see me if you have any questions. Okay.